For the last five weeks, we have been focusing on the Bread of Life discourse in the sixth chapter of John. And in doing so, we emphasize the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist and the notion that the Eucharist <coughs> is a sacrifice. And so now we turn our attention to the sacrament of holy orders and in particular the priesthood because the Eucharist and the priesthood are intimately linked. They depend upon each other. You can't have one without the other. Priests exist to offer sacrifice, and the Eucharist is a sacrifice. So without the Eucharist, there would be no need for priests. And without the priesthood, we could not celebrate the Eucharist. I think it is no coincidence that Jesus instituted both sacraments on the night of the Last Supper, on the same night, the night before his Passion. In instituting the Eucharist, he wanted to provide a means by which he would be continuously present with us until he returns again in glory, fulfilling the promise he made in Matthew 28, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. And he wanted to provide a means by which the sacrifice that he would offer at a particular moment in time and place, 33 AD on Calvary, would be made present today and every day in every place in the world until Jesus does come again in glory. And so he would call men to offer that sacrifice in his person. Jesus is the true high priest. He is the real celebrant of the Mass. A few years ago, when I was in Kokomo, I was talking to a third grade class, and I asked what I thought was a trick question. Who is the celebrant of the Mass? And they all responded in unison, Jesus. Rats. So much for my trick questions. But the priest, the ministerial priest, offer this sacrifice in the person of Christ, in persona Christi, and by the grace of their ordination, they are configured to Christ, the high priest. What does all this mean? Well, the priest is not a stand-in or a substitute offering somebody else's sacrifice. He is intimately involved in that sacrifice because he becomes Jesus himself. He offers himself as part of that sacrifice. I think that point was driven home for many of us priests at our ordination in a very peculiar way. On the floor of the cathedral, we priests have memories of our ordination just as married couples have memories of their wedding day. <clears throat> And there are certain parts of the ordination rite that are meaningful for us. For myself and others, it was laying down, face down, on a cold, hard marble floor while the litany of the saints was being sung. And people may ask, what was going through your mind while all of that was going on? Well, for myself, I would say, I, I, I thought, this is it. I mean, you no longer live for yourself. You live for others. You belong to Christ now. It's all about Jesus. And I think uh, what came to mind while I was laying there was another person laying face down on the ground in Gethsemane when he made his final surrender to God. Not my will, but thine be done. Those words could be our words as well. In the Vatican II document, Lumen Gentium, Light of the Nations, there is a distinction made between the common priesthood and the ministerial priesthood. The common priesthood encompasses all of the baptized. All of the baptized are called to participate in Christ's priesthood. All of the baptized are called to offer sacrifices. They could be of various types. It could be our monetary offerings. 
It could be the gifts of bread and wine that are brought forward for the Eucharist. It could be spiritual sacrifices, our prayers, our intentions for others and for the church, our blessings, our gifts and abilities, our frustrations, our crosses, our very selves. And the ministerial priest act in service to the common priesthood, so we are your servants. And in the liturgy, we accept the offerings that you bring, along with our personal self-offering. We join that to the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, who presents everything to the Father in return for our salvation and our sanctification. In the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, Jesus took a meager offering and transformed it into something greater. That's what happens here. He takes our meager offerings and transforms them into something greater, his divine life, which makes us holy. And so us priests are invested in your holiness through the words we preach, through the prayers we offer, through the sacraments we administer, through our striving to be holy ourselves, we want you to be holy. We want you to go to heaven. Someone asked the late Archbishop of Chicago, Cardinal Francis George, when did you feel most like a priest? And he responded, it's when I go to the emergency room in the middle of the night and anoint the patient and pray with their families. Well, that's a good answer. And that's when I feel like a priest when I do that too. A little later, when I was in the seminary, Pope John XXIII Seminary in Weston, Massachusetts, we were privileged to be visited by Cardinal George Pell of Australia. And I asked him, when, did, when do you feel most like a priest? And he said, it's when I'm hearing confessions. Another good answer, being a minister of God's mercy and pronouncing his forgiveness on each one of you is a very humbling experience for us. But here's how I would answer that question. I feel most like a priest when I'm standing over there and repeating the words of Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. This is my body. That's the most important thing I do each day. That's what makes me a priest, the Eucharist. And so, the, uh, I, I can't, all the other activities that I perform, they kind of feed from the Eucharist and flow back to the Eucharist. In Latin, that's called exitus reditus. And this vocation to which I've been called is not a job, it's not a uh, career, it's a life, a life of self-giving for others. Our late Holy Father, Pope St. John Paul II, once said that people are at their greatest when they offer themselves as a gift to others. Jesus said in the Gospels that greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. Us ministerial priests were invited to lay down our lives, literally, on the floor of that cathedral.